Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to introduce the chief guest for this session, Engineer Mangala P. B. Yapa. Engineer Mangala Yapa is a marine engineer, naval architect, and a professional manager. He is a chartered engineer and a fellow of the Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka, a member of the Institute of Marine Engineers UK, scientists and technologists. And he is a founder fellow of the Institute of Certified Professional Managers. He obtained his tertiary and postgraduate education at the Technical University in Russia and Postgraduate Institute of Management, University of Sri Jayadanapura. He is also an alumnus of the National University of Singapore and the Harvard Kennedy School of Executive Education, Cambridge, USA. He has held the position of the Managing Director, CEO of the Colombo Duckyard since April 2004 to April 2014. Among his engagements, he has served as the Chairman of BOI, President, National Chamber of Exporters, CEO, Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, to name a few. He has won the Engineering Excellence Award in 2013 the discipline of marine engineering by the Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka in recognition of his outstanding achievements in transforming the Colombo Dockyard into a world-class entity. I would like to invite Engineer Mangalayapa to deliver the convocation address. Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, distinguished members of the Academia of the Sri Lanka Institute of Information Technology, distinguished invitees, the parents of the graduates, my dear graduates, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to each one of you. I feel honored and privileged to have been asked to be the chief guest at the graduation ceremony of this prestigious institution, a pioneering institution that is primarily dedicated to information technology and to develop the skills and competencies demanded for the future. As I recollect and learned, Sri Lanka Institute of Information Technology, or commonly known as SLEET, is a degree awarding institution that was established in 1999 on a unique model, out of an out of the box concept, and a non state higher education institute approved by the University Grants Commission. The results are seen today. SLIT is producing IT and other graduates in a variety of disciplines. I heard that the Board of Investment, too, had a role to play at the formative years, apart from investment facilitation. My sincere appreciation to the founders for their wisdom and untiring work, and if not for their boldness, forthrightness, and the courage to take the first steps, there wouldn't be a slit and a graduation ceremony this morning. Let me also express my sincere thanks to Professor Lakshman Ratnayaka, the Chancellor, Professor Lalit Gamage, the Vice Chancellor, and other dignitaries at the SLIT for inviting me for this most important occasion. The most important and perhaps the happiest group today must be the graduates who received, already received their degrees, completed their undergraduate studies, and aspire to leap into the working world. My most sincere and warmest congratulations to all of you. You all have done your best, 
be happy, and enjoy the day. For many of you, it's a dream come true. No doubt, you have toiled hard to reach this stage of your life. I'm sure your parents, who may be present with you to witness this momentous milestone in your life, too are extremely pleased with your success. They may be also relieved in the sense that the program offered by SLIT being a fee-living course where they had to sacrifice their earnings and precious savings, perhaps under stress to make this journey a reality. I'm sure your sacrifices are not wasted. You have enabled your sons and daughters to acquire the knowledge, skills, and competencies to face the emerging complex world. Rest assured that you have done your duty, and it's up to them, the graduates, to do well in their respective journeys. This ceremony also brings back fond memories of my own graduation from Astrakhan Technical Institutions in the former Soviet Union, where I graduated from over three decades ago, when I set new ambitions to myself. That was a different era. If one failed to enter the local state universities, the opportunities and options were extremely limited. Applying and securing a scholarship to study in a foreign university was one such option, and I was extremely lucky to have been able to secure one. Going to a higher learning institution is about acquiring the skills, both technical and social, that will project you into a meaningful and satisfying career. It is about developing as a person holistically so that you can really contribute to your community. It is about embarking on an interesting and rewarding life and creating a meaningful impact on the world around you. If I ask anyone of you, if I ask any one of you why you joined the undergraduate program at SLEET, the most common answers would be to learn and acquire knowledge, to get a degree and acquire qualification, and above all, many of you will tell to get a job of work and earn money to live a successful life. Well, I too thought so many decades ago. I chose a very rare and highly specialized area for my tertiary education, shipbuilding. By then, I never heard of any facility or opportunities and potential to build ships in Sri Lanka. I was born and had my primary education in a very remote but a beautiful hamlet in Badulla, a very serene village called Muthetu Egama. I came to Kalambu and attended Nalanda Vidyalaya, where I met one of my faculty, I mean classmates, Professor Rahula, uh, who is sitting in the head uh, dais today, uh, Vidyalaya after the then grade seven scholarship. I was never dreaming of ships or shipbuilding then, but at the end, choose to study it. Fortunately or unfortunately, neither my parents, close relatives, nor even my school teachers had any influence whatsoever in the field I studied. This was solely my choice. I'm sure there would have been many reservations, cautions, had they known what I was pursuing. My mother's only concern was my safety as she thought shipbuilding meant that I would be mostly in the sea. However, my father was indifferent and always encouraged me to find I, what I wanted to do in life. Having graduated with, masters, with a master's degree with honors, like many of you today, and returning to Sri Lanka, I managed to join a subsidiary of the only shipbuilding company in Sri Lanka, Kalambu Dockyard, as a trainee engineer on a contract basis. 
leaving an opportunity to join the University of Moratua, like uh, Rahula, Professor Lakshman, and others, as an assistant lecturer, lecturer as UMO, University of Moratua was conducting a diploma course in marine engineering and thought I may have some opportunities. Yet, I joined the industry. Life presents you many choices. You choose what you think that is good for you and pursue it. I never regret about the choices I made in my life. When I walked into Dockyard, I thought I knew all about shipbuilding and ships because I spent almost six years studying it and graduated with honors. I still recollect my first day at work at Gold Slip Pay and Engineering, the subsidiary of Colombo Dockyard. At the very first day at work, all I was asked to do was to sit in a corner in an office and read through a bunch of files, administrative and other institutional circulars, which described various rules and procedures to follow. By afternoon, I was told that I had to move to Colombo and lead a small construction team fabricating the box gate for the new dry dock being constructed at Colombo Dockyard. Starting off on the following day, which was incidentally a poor day. I walked into the workshop in the morning, managed to locate the team from Goal, and after an hour or so, the senior engineer who supervised the job walked in, briefly introduced me to the team, put a tap on the back and said, Yapa, you can proceed with the work, and walked away. That was the beginning of my work life. It didn't take me more than an hour to realize how little I know what little I know about shipbuilding and work. I was grappling in the dark. It took me 20 years to learn, work through the institutional hierarchy, do an MBA while working, and reach the epitome of my career, to become the chief executive officer of the company that I joined as a trainee engineer on contract basis. As for me, my real learning came through working applying what I learned and making mistakes. Colombo Dockyard was my second place of advanced learning. My superiors, peers, subordinates, even the janitors and cleaners, and our customers and suppliers were my teachers. In latter years, I used to tell my juniors and trainees, even the air that flows within Dockyard and you breathe carry knowledge and experience. So when you breathe it, take it in with conscience. Looking back, I can say that I truly enjoyed every bit of it, every challenge I faced, and every opportunity I encountered. It was truly a success. I have no doubt that similar to me, you with your degree certificate will walk out this institution head held high and with full enthusiasm and immense expectations. And let me most sincerely wish you all success. You will make choices in your working life and embark upon your working life. However, don't forget that working life is different to that of your university life. It has different expectations and challenges. Your prior learning may help but absolutely not enough. Unlike me, who walked into a mechanistic engineering world with complex human beings, you will be walking into a digital world, an era with artificial intelligence, machine language, and robotics. It is a new ocean and new stars to discover. You will have to deal with hundreds, if not thousands, of people, machines, robots, software and hardware, and many more evolving things. Yet, remember one thing in your life. You are what you are, no matter what the world is. 
You are unique and special, and you can and are able to make a positive impact to the society and the world that you live in. Have confidence in you. No challenge is easy or simple, nor is it impossible. With self-confidence and perseverance, you could over overcome it. Yesterday, I was deliver delivering a guest speech at the National School of Business Management, NSBM. And my friend, Mr. Deepal Suryarachi, was the chief guest. He spoke about innovation. He said, to innovate, you have to ask new questions. Asking the same question will give you the same old answer. If you ask a new question to a problem, you will find a new way of solving it. That was his hypothesis. So learn to think innovatively. Ask new questions and find new solutions. I'm sure you all want to be successful. By the way, talking about success, what is success? Many tend to think that destination or getting somewhere in career-wise to a certain position and monies and perks you earn in is success. We tend to celebrate achievements. We toil hard for years to get to some position. However, this is more a West Western way of looking at success. As for me, success is not the destination or what you achieve, but the journey towards that. In fact, Deepal in his yesterday's uh, speech alluded me to the cultural underpinning of the Eastern Sri Lankan way of looking at success, at least in the past. Think of your grandparents or even your great grandparents going on a pilgrimage. Unlike us, they enjoyed the preparation and the journey. I used to listen to stories that my grandmother used to tell me in the night how she went to Vatavandanavi, Osiripade, or some other trip, how she prepared for it, what she encountered. For her, getting to the Anuradhapura, Atamastane, or Siripade was not what was interesting, but the journey. Whether it is a religious pilgrimage or whether it is a job, our people used to enjoy the journey. We have examples. When you climb Siripade, old people, perhaps not the younger ones today, used to sing. You sing and enjoy. Enjoy sweetmeats, enjoy food, enjoy the company. When people worked in Bogala Patala, you had Patal Kavi. When people were doing transporting logs on Paru, you had Paru Kavi. They sang and happily endured the ordeal. In other words, enjoyed the journey. So my dear graduates, this is my keynote to you on this important day of your, yours. Enjoy the journey, journey that is before you as you walk through it. Every step, every moment, every endeavor matters. You will meet many challenges, many hurdles, many obstacles, many opportunities. Never hesitate to look back and appreciate the path you traversed. Good luck and bon voyage. In my own marine parlance, may I wish you fair winds and following seas in your forward voyage to uncharted destinies. Thank you and good luck.